We want to put in measures for non-commercial transfers of marijuana to prevent passing a joint from a friend being considered trafficking. And this is actually what happened to Mr. Emery, where, where he is now in jail as a result of that particular aspect of the law in terms of passing a joint. We also want to ensure that there are reasonable grounds are required for searches. For example, pe police should have reasonable grounds to suspect more than, that more than 30 grams are in a home for a warrant to be issued. We also want to see changes to the fine regime, and we want to see non-punitive measures for personal cultivation of up to five plants. Except in British Columbia, where the discount is so prominent. That gives you 30 to 60 joints. There is nobody, nobody that smokes marijuana that carries 30 grams on them unless they're selling it. A uh, 2002 Gallup poll survey indicated that 77 percent of Canadians believe that cannabis possession should either be legalized, that's 37 percent, or that a fine should be the only penalty for the offense, and that was ed indicated at 40 percent. What the Conservatives you know, what they cannot deal with and the reality that they continue to deny is that by relying on criminal enforcement um, as the primary tool for preventing use, we've actually made the situation worse. By driving the problem underground, by, by denying reality and proper education and... and uh... I would also think that it's wise for us to look at the situation south of the border because individuals have said you know, the Americans won't like this. But if you look at the situation in the United States, it's very, very interesting. 70% of Americans do not support the marijuana laws in their country. 70% of the general public. They think the marijuana laws in the United States are punitive and grossly unfair. That's very important to, to know. In international laws that govern uh, uh, these illicit substances do allow individual countries to engage in those programs and those initiatives that they feel are going to better address small-time users. We have the flexibility, Mr. Speaker, with, with the, within the context of the international laws that we have signed to be able to do what we think is the right thing to reduce use in our country. The Conservatives worry the legislation will result in retaliation by the United States and costly holdups at the border. We know that the Americans are very opposed to this bill and, and quite frankly, as my constituents say to me, we would rather be working than smoking drugs. Of high potency marijuana, 95% of which is being sent to the United States and uh, growing, uh, it's a major employer and 95% of that is going to the United States. 95% of that is being shipped to the United States. And 95% of that marijuana is going to the United States. 95% uh, uh, of the production in British Columbia estimated high potency uh, marijuana into the United States. Those and legal experts agree Canada is not the problem. There's a lot of mythology about Canada being a major exporter of cannabis to the United States. In fact, we're a minor exporter of cannabis. But of course, if you demonize Canada, Canada in some, as the American administration is trying to do, then it makes it easier to try and forestall this sort of legislative change. Um, and the concern is that once we liberalize the laws here, uh, it'll increase the already hefty, if illegal, exports of, of marijuana south of the border. Well, I think you have to understand, you know, the United States has been cracking down on marijuana coming out of Colombia, out of Mexico, out of Jamaica, really all around the world for many decades. And it's never had much of an impact on marijuana use in the United States. There's always somebody willing to step in the shoes. Right now, the largest producer of marijuana for the U.S. market is the United States itself. And there are lots of marijuana producers in California and Hawaii and around the country who will claim that their product is just as good as... Cannabis, the most abused drug in North America, continues to be produced in large quantities in all three countries in the region. According to the estimates of the United States government, more than 10,000 tons of cannabis herb are produced in the United States. I'm not saying this. The UN NARCs are saying this. 10,000 tons. In addition, more than 5,000 tons of cannabis are smuggled into the country. Almost 40% of all cannabis herb seizures reported worldwide are made in Mexico. But 10,000 tons of cannabis are produced in the U.S. Well, now, uh, 5,000 tons are smuggled into the country. Now, what do we get you know, 
from this massive flood of cannabis, the potent hydroponic, sophisticatedly drone, grown and smoked only by sophisticates like your reporter here. That uh, cannabis reform, I believe that we will do a much better job. And having said that, uh, we're not the first country to do that. They did that in other countries in the world as well, and it's been proven to be, uh, to be efficient. What we've seen is that in areas where it has been decriminalized in the United States or in places in Europe, uh, there's no increase in, in amount of use. What we need to do is we need to engage the Americans and say to them, look, you and I, we have the same problems. We want to decrease drug use, we want to decrease harm, and we want to get after organized crime gangs that are profiteering off the uh, status quo. They, they took two years talking to experts. They traveled all around the world, went to several countries, and they studied their policies, including yours. And one thing that they seem to have determined, or that they have determined, is that zero policy is, isn't working, and it's certainly not working in your country. Yet there are 11 U.S. states that have decriminalized marijuana, so I, I don't understand the difference. Well, the difference is simple. The states that have done this have not removed the criminal sanction. We still, and we have not changed the federal law. And there also have been quite publicly, we have enforced the federal law in some of those states that thought they were relaxing sanctions for, for possession and for uh, production. Why do you think the Americans are coming down so hard in the Canadian government on this issue when, as I understand it, at least 10 American states have already proceeded with decriminalization in the 1970s? I think you have to understand how truly out of step the United States government is relative to other advanced industrialized democracies. What Canada is doing is very much in step with what's going on in Western Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and other parts of the world. The U.S. is increasingly isolated, and I think that this government finds it perhaps a little embarrassing to have our closest neighbor and ally moving forward in a more sensible, science-based, health-driven sort of way. But more than that, the best research tends to show that decriminalization of marijuana has little to no impact on levels of use. If you look around the world, you'll see countries like the United States with very punitive marijuana policies, yet also very high rates of use. And you'll see exactly the opposite elsewhere. So I think that this concern is vastly overblowing. Well, more than just Ottawa's proposal to decriminalize possession, Walters is concerned about lenient sentences handed to Canadian traffickers. A fact he says Canadians should worry about too, given a spike in drug-related violence, whether it involves bikers in Quebec or Asian gangs in BC. People from other parts of the world will come to where there is less risk to engage in the business of drug trafficking and addiction and the violence. Understand that their war on, so-called war on drugs, has been a failure, is a failure, and will always be a failure. So, but I pointed out, I mean, that this issue really wasn't on the radar screen for Canadian officials, but it really is for the Americans. Why is that then? Well, you have to understand that marijuana in the United States political context uh, really plays a role which is very different than it does in Canada. It's part of what they call the culture war, which is the war between what you might call the counterculture, the liberal permissiveness of the 1960s versus social conservatives, that sort of thing. And the social conservatives, of course, are now very much ensconced in very much. Well, I mean, the best studies tend to show that marijuana policies, the harshness of the policies, have relatively little impact on levels of use and abuse relative to other factors in the culture. It's why, for example, the Dutch, with a much uh, more lenient policy on marijuana in the United States, has always had lower rates of marijuana use among both young people and older than is true in the United States. The really stiff prohibition laws at the U.S. enables organized crime to produce something that costs very little to produce, illicit drugs, and sell them for massive profits. And as a result, you get all of those problems with crime, disease, and harm. Mm -hmm. We need to engage the Americans and say, we have a mutual problem. Let's look at what works to decrease harm and decrease use in our, both of our countries. So if we legalized, we'd get all the things that we as a social system want, or as a society, we, we want an end to organized crime handling these drugs. We want uh, adults and teenagers, if they get these drugs, to know what they're getting and to keep it out in the open so we understand what people are getting. There's no reason drugs should be expensive as they are in the black market. People are spending their hard-earned treasure, whether for marijuana, cocaine, heroin, and in the case of hard drugs, they have to steal for this money. In the case of marijuana, people shouldn't be spending the money they are now on a substance that's price high because it's illegal. We want people out of jails. We want the courts not to be filled with drug crime. We want the streets to be safe. All these things can be accomplished if we legalize marijuana and all the other prohibited drugs. You want to